everybody, my name is Chris and I'm the founder of Lukey Bike Adventures and I am here working on this Huffy uh, full suspension, what's it called, trail runner? And <laughs> this bike is annoying. <laughs> There's just a lot of little things that aren't cooperating. Um, <clears throat> I had to, the, the axle was bent. Fortunately, I have two of these exact same bikes. Uh, the different colors, but they seem to be exactly the same otherwise. Both of them are a little rough, um, but I'm able to take parts from the other one and put it onto this one and make things work. And then I'll figure out what I'm going to do with the other one later on, um, if I'm going to replace those parts or scrap it or, or what. But, so we had a bent axle, and uh, so I had to take one from the other one. This one is also a little bit bent. Uh, not so much that I think it's going to be problematic, but it is, there's a little bit of bend to it. Um, <clears throat> it seems to be working okay now. <clears throat> I am having some problems with the front shifter, so I haven't decided if I'm just going to keep trying to tweak it. It's called a Peak. You know, I, I'm not familiar with that brand or model, so I mean, maybe it needs to be replaced. Maybe I just need to keep working on it. Maybe I need to just lock up this derailleur and, um... Uh, you know, just have it stuck in, in a single gear. And this will just be like a one by. Haven't decided yet. But just a lot of little annoying things like that that I have to deal with with this bike. And But it cleaned up pretty nice. Um, <clears throat> the other things seem to not have really any issue. Um, but the thing that I'm making the video about is the freewheel. I regret that I didn't start recording earlier. But I was kind of frustrated and just kind of wanted to work on it. But it worked out so well, I'm going to share it with you guys. So the freewheel, it was really noisy. Um, and this is the one from the other bike. And I don't know if you can hear that. There's like the clicking that you're supposed to hear of the, um, just basically like a thousand tiny little ball bearings and some poles and just like a lot of little moving parts inside here. And I am not a masochist, so I am not going to open this up for you because that's just going to be a horrific mess. Um, but this one, you can hear there's... I can hear it anyways. I don't know how well it translates on camera. But there's like just some extra noise to it. And as I'm holding it in my hand here, I can feel like some roughness and uh, like it's just not spinning as smoothly as it should. Like there's some extra vibrations and whatnot going on. And the same thing was happening here. It, and when I, um, if I pedal backwards or if I just kind of let it spin, it sounded like popcorn or something. Like just kind of like a lot of extra poppy noises that were happening. And I'm like, that's not supposed to sound like that. And so if you listen now, there's nothing. Like it's super quiet. And so I wanted to, yeah, it's like super quiet now. So I wanted to show you guys what I did to accomplish that. Uh, um, so it's actually really simple. Um, like I said, I did not open this up at all. That is, a, uh, have done that I think once before. Opened it up to kind of see what was in there. And, and yeah, lots of ball bearings. But what I did is um, I've been using this. Uh, this is Whistler Performance Lubricants. They have a few different lubricants that I know of, but this is their fork boost. And they designed it specifically to put on the seals and um, stanchions, I get, I think that's what it's called, of the fork or your suspension to keep it clean, to moisturize the seals, keep them, what's it called? It lengthens the lifetime of the dust seals Biodegradable, non-toxic, eliminates stiction and removes dirt. Bio-based, cleans and lubricates bike suspension seals. So, um, so it's that's what it was designed for. But I've been using it um, to lubricate cable housing. I've also been using it um, anytime I need a thick oil. And so, it's it's oil, but it's it's thick, almost a consistency of like maybe honey 
or something along those lines. It reminds me a bit of like Phil's Tenacious Oil, I think. And so that's what uh, you would typically use, for something, something like that, like a thicker oil. Um, I have heard of people mixing like a triflow with the <clears throat> uh, tenacious oil or the thicker oil and using the triflow as like a carrier because triflow is super thin oil. Um, and so using that as like a carrier or either to wash out any of the old oil and gunk in here. And so actually, I guess let me explain. So what I did is just, this is... Hmm, <laughs> All right, so this part spins inside, right? And so, <clears throat> going that way, you can see this ring spinning here. But like I said, there's there's bearings and poles and lots of little moving parts inside here. And so what you can do is you can take some sort of liquid oil, um, like I said, something like a triflow, which is this stuff here works fantastic for this if you just dump this in now I'm gonna go ahead and use some I'm not normally using triflow anymore because it's not biodegradable uh, but I guess just to I'm almost out of this one so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just use this and so I kind of just hold it as a at an angle here like that and basically just fill it up fill it up with triflow and give it a spin. And you keep doing that. And I usually fill it up and spin it. And you can hear it getting quieter already. And I usually keep going at the very least until you start seeing oil coming out on the other side. And then maybe just like a little bit more. All right, and so that's going to, it really easily penetrates. It's a very thin, light oil. So I penetrate it down in there, spin it around really good. You might even want to turn it and add some oil like in a different spot. And just let it really soak and penetrate in there. And then... <clears throat> No, I actually skipped that step. I just went straight to the WPL here. And you could also, like I said, use Phil Tenacious Oil. Um, in the past, I've also used uh, this wet lube because it's also very thick. It's a liquid. It's a um, chain lube, but it's for wet conditions. So it's this just super thick um, oil. And it actually seemed to work pretty good for this as well. <laughs> Like I said, I'm trying to keep things biodegradable as much as I can. And so now doing the same thing. And so you can, I don't know if you'll be able to see the difference in consistency here, but it's a much thicker oil, maybe syrup, maybe honey, something like that. And do the same thing. And I just spin it and let gravity and, you know, just the movement there, suck it into all the, all the little nooks and crannies. And you just keep going <coughs> until, until it quiets down, basically. Until it feels quiet and smooth and oil is coming out on the other side. And so I want the, the, the triflows coming out on this side, but I want to make sure that the thicker oil is coming out on the other side as well. So I know it's penetrated all the way through. And so whenever it starts to disappear... Uh, like it flows through just add a little bit more spin it and right there I could hear a difference in sound I don't know if you heard that but it just like suddenly just kind of went really quiet and now it feels smooth so now and I can feel the oil coming out of my hand on this side so you could you you could hear and feel once when the oil fully penetrated Now listen how it's like, it's like a, a, a ghost freewheel now. It's just completely, well, not completely silent, but it's much quieter and it's moving really smoothly in my hand. All right. And then that's it. Um, 
give it just a lot of spins to make sure that oil is moved around and everywhere and just lubricating all those parts in there. And so if you've got a noisy or sticky freewheel that's causing you some problems, uh, this is a really quick and inexpensive solution that, well, I mean, maybe you'll have to buy a new freewheel eventually, uh, but this will certainly buy you some time. Um, I did this on another bike before, and um, mm, you know, I don't remember what bike that was, but I don't think I replaced the freewheel. I might have sold that bike. I can't remember, but <laughs> it, it was a bike that I definitely, I, I rode it for a while before I got rid of it, wherever it is now. Um, so, yeah, so now I just clean up that oil with a rag. Get all this excess off, and then you can just put it back on your bike, put it back on the wheel, and uh, and you're done. So that's it. So that's how you get a noisy freewheel, a noisy sticky freewheel, to be a nice, quiet, smooth freewheel. And uh, save yourself some money. So you know, as long as the teeth aren't damaged. Um, this doesn't need to be replaced, at least not yet. You know, I might have to, maybe I can ride this for a while and <clears throat> maybe have to do it again and after a few thousand miles or a hundred miles or whatever. But as long as the teeth are in good condition and as long as not completely seized, you can save some money, save some resources and uh, keep using it. So there we go. So I'm going to save this for another bike because it's there's there's nothing wrong with it for right now so it's freshly oiled working nice and smooth it's gonna be good to go on on one of these many bikes i'm sure we'll need uh, a new freewheel so there we go all right uh hopefully that was interesting and helpful to you like i said my name is chris and this is lukey bike adventures check out the links below to learn what we're doing but Basically, I'm collecting and fixing up bikes so that I can take kids who normally don't have the opportunity out to mountain biking trails and teach them how to ride, teach them how to fix bikes, and where possible, give them bikes. So that's what we're doing. Uh, head over to the website. It's uh, lukeybikes.square.site, um, and you can make a donation, or you can see pictures and learn more about me and, and the, the project that we're doing. We are a officially a 501c3 now so that's really exciting that's something that just happened a few weeks ago um and it's a pretty new uh operation you know we just started this let's see it's been it's been less than three months and we've already got over 50 bikes collected several of them um actually most of them need to be fixed but i've already got maybe three or four of them fixed um and so planning on doing our first rides coming up in the summer Doing a big giveaway in June and starting my first classes to kids, teaching them how to fix bikes in March. So that's just a few weeks away. I've also got a conference coming up. So lots of fun stuff. Check out the website. Check out our Instagram. Uh, like and subscribe and stay in the loop. And, and uh, thanks again to all my supporters. And if you enjoyed the channel, you know, you're welcome. How about that? <laughs> all right. Thanks.